Hello, this is David Shepard. My book reviews are exclusively to bring advice and inspiration to small business owners and entrepreneurs. Is it then fair to use Steve Jobs, father of what became the world's most valuable company, as a case study? My answer is an unequivocal yes, because the point of Insanely Simple, a book by Ken Seagal, is that Jobs never gave up running Apple in precisely the way you should run your small company. He rooted around in the details and imposed his will at such seemingly mundane levels that other Fortune 500 company CEOs would have thought he was wasting his time. Yet their companies pale in comparison. We have, of course, seen endless analyses of the Jobsian micromanagement style. But Ken attacks it from a different and far more relevant, to you, perspective. Jobs, he insists, who was famous for predicting that products would be insanely great, knew that such products could only emerge from a company culture that was insanely simple. Insanely Simple, the obsession that drives Apple's success, is a terrific book for entrepreneurs. Every small business owner in America should read and study this well-written book. Ken is an advertising executive who has served as creative director for companies such as IBM, Dell, Intel, and BMW. He also worked closely with Steve Jobs for more than a decade, close enough to have his share of stories about midnight calls and sudden eruptions. Ken's humor is refreshing as he retells some riveting stories and his own survival strategies, such as knowing when to get out of the line of fire. What Ken writes about is Jobs' obsession with simplicity, an obsession that I believe is more important to the small business owner than any other. But as an entrepreneur, you should heed what Ken makes apparent on page after page. Simplicity is not easy. In most cases, it is the opposite of easy. Simplifying requires the courage, in many cases, to do less. Simplifying requires eliminating benefits, something abhorrent to most marketers. The failure to simplify is why Dell was at one point offering 18 models of laptops, each with an array of possible configurations. At the same time, an Apple customer had little more to do than decide between a large screen or small. Speaking of small, Jobs understood that small correlates to simple in a variety of ways. Perhaps he understood the mathematics of factorials or the physics of entropy, or perhaps it was just gut feel. But for Jobs, even one extraneous person at a meeting sowed the seeds of future complexity in the form of additional emails, invitations, and additional CYA. He considered this so threatening that he was known to stop in mid-sentence when he identified someone in a meeting whose role he did not know and asked them to leave. While Jobs may have expressed these feelings less charmingly than most, he is not alone in his sentiment. Jack Welch, the legendary former CEO of General Electric, writes in his book Winning of how he believes curtness serves all parties well as opposed to expending time and effort on protecting the feelings of others. As Ken Seagal writes, blunt is simplicity, meandering is complexity. Ken also warns that there is no almost when it comes to making things simple. Simplicity is an all-or-nothing proposition. No picking or choosing allowed. If you can only muster up the energy to buy into a part of simplicity, you're just going to hurt yourself trying. Simpler is not always easier for you, the entrepreneur, but it will make life easier for your customer and make it easier for them to buy from you. If making things simpler for you feels easier, you've probably not yet found the simplest solution and your search must go on. In the course of your search, as always, you will find that the ultimate simplicity comes only after saying no to far more things than you say yes to. Ken quotes Jobs as saying that innovation is saying no to a thousand things.
If you're of a certain age, as I am, you may recall Three Dog Night singing about how the number one was the loneliest number. It is also the simplest number. Two, after all, is 100% greater than one. The farther away you get from one, Ken writes, the more complex things get. That is why, at the time when cell phones were chocked full of buttons that had to be pressed in various combinations, Jobs told his disbelieving engineers exactly how many buttons the iPhone would have. One. Writes Ken, product naming is the ultimate exercise in simplicity. It requires one to capture in a single word, possibly two, the essence of a product or company. And in some cases create a personality for it. This is critical to the small business owner because you simply can't communicate complexity. You don't have the budget or resources, and there is simply too much noise in the marketplace for you to break through with anything other than a single laser-like focus. Complexity is what will tempt you to create multiple products, multiple layers, multiple memberships, etc., But you don't get to sit prospective clients down for four hours with flip charts and spreadsheets until they get it. They aren't going to get it unless it is dead simple. Unless it exudes the power of one. Complexity is the killer of even the smallest business. And rooting out complexity is hard work. Ken warns that this means erring on the side of overkill. He says this in a chapter entitled, Think War, in which he insists that the battle against complexity is a war, and a never-ending one. So it must become your nature never to relent, he says. There is no nicking the arm of complexity. You need to blow it away. I wait for years for a book like Insanely Simple, and it is always worth the wait. By the way, Ken will never have to worry about his legacy. You see, it was he who gave us I, as in iPod, iPhone, iPad, and iEmpire. Thanks, Ken. On behalf of entrepreneurs everywhere, thanks for your terrific book. For more tracks like this, please visit EntreInspire.com. This is David Shepard. 